Welcome to the Chomp Man tutorial series. Based on the beloved classic arcade game Pac-Man, this project was created to be an easy to follow step-by-step -step guide that would give you the tools, techniques, and experience of creating a full game from start to finish. We've made all the original assets that we created for the game completely free. So all the characters, levels, textures, sound, and menus are completely free to download and use in this or any other project. Links in the description below. For this project, if you wish to follow along step by step, you will need to first download the Chompman project files, both of which can be downloaded in the downloads area of the tutorial site or from links in the description. To get started, the first thing we'll do is to create and save a new scene. To do this, go to File and in the drop-down, click New Scene. To save the scene, go to File and in the drop-down, click Save Scene As. Name your scene Level Underscore 01 and save it in the Scenes folder of the Chompman project. With our new scene saved, we'll begin our project by creating the first maze level of our game. To do this, we'll need to drag our level prefab geometry into the hierarchy so that it appears in our scene. Find and go to the Maze Geo folder, which is in the Chompman prefab folder and under the Environment subfolder. In the Maze Geo and Maze Modular folders, you should find all the modular pieces needed to create an almost endless series of mazes for your game. For our first maze, we'll design its layout to reflect the first stage layout of the original Pac-Man. This and many more maze layouts can be found in the Maze Layout Reference folder. To begin, right-click in the hierarchy and create a new empty game object. We want this new game object to be positioned at 000, the origin of the 3D world. However, if it's not, click the cog on the upper right of the transform and select and click Reset. This will reset both an object's transform and its rotation. Next, we'll rename our game object to maze underscore zero one. With our object named, drag and drop the stage ground prefab into the hierarchy and place it inside of maze zero one, making the stage ground prefab a child of maze zero one. It should also be positioned at zero zero zero. If it's not, click the cog to reset its transform. Next, we'll grab our stage mesh zero one and also place it as a child of Maze 01 game object. We can now begin using the modular pieces from the Maze Geo folder to create the maze from the reference photo. Additionally, by clicking the camera controls in the viewport, your camera viewport will snap to that angle, and by clicking the arrow or three horizontal lines under the camera controls, you can toggle to an orthographic or perspective view. In order to better match the layout of our maze to the reference, we'll temporarily rotate our Maze01 game object 180 degrees in the y-axis. Doing this should point the opening in the Stage Mesh 1 geometry away from the camera. We'll also move our game camera to better reflect the view of the player. However, before doing that, let's first make some adjustments to the settings of our camera component. First, let's adjust our far clipping plane so it's not trying to render too much. The default is 1000, which is far beyond anything we'll have in our scene. So let's adjust the far clipping plane to 50 and the near clipping plane to 0.1. Next, we'll move and rotate our camera to get a more holistic view of the maze in our game view. To quickly activate your rotation controls for any object in Unity's scene view, press the E key. Alternatively, the W key will activate your move controls and the R key will activate scale controls. Conversely, you can also use the buttons at the upper left-hand section of the Unity editor window.
In order to get a more accurate view from a variety of angles, you can use and create multiple windows alongside the game view, as well as dock or overlay the views for better visibility of your scene. After placing one of the Maze Geo prefabs in the scene and selecting it, you should notice that each piece has its own corresponding mesh collider. The mesh collider the object uses is a simplified version of the geometry. With your camera and multiple viewports in place, use the reference images or copy the transform positions on screen to complete setting up the first maze. Remember to continue to make the maze pieces children of the Maze 01 game object.
Since the maze is the same on both sides, to speed up the level layout process, we can simply duplicate the pieces and rotate them or scale them negatively in the x-axis. Since all the maze geo and pieces are modular, by holding V and moving a game object, the game object will automatically snap to the vertexes of the other objects in the scene. In order to not have to do this for each object, create an empty game object and select all the pieces that you want to duplicate. To select multiple game objects, hold or press Shift as you select them. Next, drag the selected game objects into the new empty game object. Select the empty game object and hold the control key and press D. This is the keyboard shortcut for duplicating anything in the inspector or your scene. With your newly duplicated object selected, change the scale transform to negative one in the X axis. Now that both sides of the maze are in place, Remove the maze pieces from the empty game objects and make the maze01 game object the parent to all the pieces. Once that's complete, delete the two empty game objects. Now that the maze is fully complete, feel free to add, adjust, or remove any pieces to customize the maze to the way you envision it. In the Prefab Maze Modular folder, you'll find that we've further separated the Maze Geo into smaller modular pieces. This should allow you to mix and match any aspect of the Maze Geo to create pieces of different lengths, shapes, and sizes. Remember, by holding the V key as you move objects, you can snap the vertexes to other game objects. In order to better organize our scene, once your maze layout is complete, create two empty game objects and ensure that their position and rotation transforms are set to zero. Name the first game object Stage Borders and drag all the Stage Border prefabs into it, making them its child. Name the second game object Stage Meshes and drag all the remaining Stage Mesh prefabs into it. That completes our Maze 1 Geometry setup. Be sure to join us in the next video where we'll continue building our Chompman game. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, interviews, and free game asset giveaways.